Hey, what's up YouTube? I've got a pretty simple build here with a 144th scale Warbird. It's a really small plane, and for that reason, I think it's actually a bit more challenging than something a bit larger in 72nd scale. Just my opinion, and you can throw the virtual rotten fruit right now. At some point, things get so small they get more difficult. But that didn't stop me from getting the photo etch set. Due to the lack of a cockpit in the base kit, it's really necessary if you want to show off the interior. The wings fit perfectly. Not. In this case, I taped the halves together and applied extra thin cement around the edges with some thicker cement in between them. I forced the plastic to melt together. When I paint the gloss black undercoat, I start with a mix of around 60-40 thinner to paint. I finish it off with a mix that's somewhere around 80% Mr. Leveling Thinner. That gives it the really wet look and as the name suggests, levels it out and makes it shiny and smooth. But not shiny and smooth enough for me. I do some really light wet sanding with water using micro mesh sanding cloths. I also use these same sanding cloths after spraying the coats of aluminum. With all clad, it's hard to see the progress of painting since there's so many thin coats that you build up. I find it's more fun to focus on peeling the tape off, which reveals the contrast between the shades. This might be 144th scale, but don't think I'm not going to cut off the wingtip lights. To be honest, I forgot about them or I would have made the cuts before I painted the whole thing. In the end, I used clear epoxy over a dot of red or green to make the lights. I used a cutout to help with the modeling and pre-shading for the olive drab section of the aircraft. The black stripes and the red no-step areas both came as decals, but I was on a roll and decided to mask and paint them anyways. Particularly since they were much easier than the red diamonds on the nose. For those, I used tape over plastic card to punch out circular masks, then cut the circles in half and arranged them to form diamonds. With my punch and die set, I've used it way more times to make paint masks for anything with small circles than I have to make pieces that I actually attach to the models. The antenna here is the original kit part sanded down and thinned to scale. The control stick is not part of the kit, so I made it from stretched sprue. The kit only comes with the option for a closed canopy, which was a problem for me based on the cockpit photo etch I used. 
I didn't spend $15 on it to have it be invisible at the end. I used a JLC razor saw to cut the canopy into two parts so I could show it open. If you're wondering about the base, it's just a couple colors of Woodland Scenics fine turf sprinkled on top of a plain wood base that I bought at Michael's, aka my local art store. Aside from the disastrous wing molding, the kit was quite an enjoyable build. Frankly, if it's not an enjoyable build, you probably won't ever see it because it won't make it far enough for a video. Ask me about the MD-11 I've been working on and off for a few years now. That's all I've got today, so see you on the next build.